Well, good morning. Oh, okay. We're going to open up uh, this morning's service in the hardback hymnal number one. Oh, worship the king, number one, if you could please stand. Psalm 90, both hours this morning, if you'd like to turn with me there in your Bibles. I told the men this morning, I think Psalm 90 has become my favorite psalm. It is so glorious. <clears throat> Let's go before the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings. Our merciful Heavenly Father, as we've just been blessed and privileged to sing with some understanding, truly you are our dwelling place. We ask now that you would be pleased to send your spirit in power. Lord, if you don't open your word to our hearts and open the eyes of our understanding, open the windows of heaven and come down. All that we do here is worse than in vain. So, Lord, we confess to you our complete dependence on your presence and your blessings, your grace and your mercy. We ask that you would enable us to speak of Christ and that you would cause us to set our affections on him as he seated as a successful sovereign savior of sinners at thy right hand. Lord, give us good hope. Rest our souls in him. For it's in his name we ask it. Amen. I've titled this Bible study, Our Dwelling Place our dwelling place, and we're going to spend the first uh, portion of our time this morning in the first verse of Psalm 90. And I have three questions I want to try to answer from this first verse. Who 
is our dwelling place? Where is our dwelling place? And who is this dwelling place for? Who is our dwelling place? Where is our dwelling place? And who is this dwelling place for? Now, this is a place that we we must be in. <laughs> we must be in this dwelling place. And this dwelling place cannot be mortgaged. It cannot be uh, uh, paid for with rent. It does not need to be maintained. Uh, this dwelling place is none other than the Lord himself. And uh, to be found in him, to be found in him, to be in Christ, that's, he is our dwelling place. Notice in verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, in all generations. Psalm 90 sets a clear contrast between the eternality and immutability of our God to the temporal, ever-changing state of us. These two things are set in, in clear contrast to one another. Presents man as a dying creature. And that's what we are. I'm a, I stand before you this morning as a dying man. Speaking to dying men. I believe that. And uh, this psalm declares to us where our hope is. And with whom our hope is. Because our Lord is not dying. <laughs> he is, he, he's the, the essence and the source of all true life. And if we're going to have life, we're going to have to be found in him. This is life. Eternal. That they might know they are the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Now notice in this first verse that God does not say that the hope for a dying man is an extended life. Or that the hope of a dying man is relief from his troubles. Or that the hope for a dying man is the abundance of worldly comfort. Our relief does not come in the form of better circumstances. In the midst of all our trials and troubles, the hope for a dying man is to be found in Christ, who himself is our dwelling place. The Lord is the refuge of his people. He is their sanctuary. All stability and life and safety is found in him. This is the rest, Isaiah 28, wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And he's speaking in Isaiah chapter 28 of the revelation of Christ made line by line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, in the word of God. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is our rest. Did he not make it clear when he said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto the doctrine of Calvinism? No. <laughs> come unto me. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. So we, we come into his presence Verse 32, uh, Psalm 32, verse 7 says, Thou, 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 Lord, art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt combat, compass me about with songs of deliverance. In the midst of this dying world, living in this dying body, the Lord is saying to his people, I'm your rest. I'm your hope. I'm your safety. I am your life. I am your dwelling place. Did not Paul say, 
I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place. This dwelling place cannot be entered into by the flesh. That which is of the flesh is flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is of God that showeth mercy. It's the Spirit of God that giveth life. We've seen that so many times throughout the scriptures. When, um, when Ezekiel preached to that valley of dry bones, uh, and they began to come together, but the scripture says, as of yet, there was no life in them. And so what did the Lord say? Man of God, prophesy to the wind. Cry out for the Spirit of God to take the message of the gospel and make it effectual to the hearts of God's people. And uh, God breathed life into their, into their dead bodies. And, uh, a great, and, and the Lord said, this is, that, that story ends with this is the whole house of Israel. The Lord told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you cannot... You cannot perceive of the kingdom of God. You can't understand it. You can't receive it. You can't enter into it unless you be born of the Spirit. So this, uh, <clears throat> this coming to our dwelling place is, uh, is not a long journey. <laughs> but it's an impossible journey to be done in the flesh. It can only be done in the power of the Spirit of God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Who is our dwelling place? Where can we find rest for our weary souls? Where can we find the hope of eternal life? How can a man be made right with God? How can I have my sin put away so that it does not condemn me in the presence of God? How can I have hope that the law has been fulfilled for me? Well, Romans chapter 10 makes it clear that the religious, the religious um, <clears throat> being ignorant in verse 3 of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own righteousness, not knowing, not knowing that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So the Lord's condemning these ones who have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. They don't know the truth. And so the Lord says, you, you, they, they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to find a dwelling place in their own efforts, in their own, in their own uh, works. Verse 5, For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. You want to be saved by the law? You're going to have to keep the whole law. Not just in outward actions like Saul of Tarsus did. He said, he said, concerning the law, I was blameless. No one could charge me with any behavior that was contrary to the law of God. But then he said, when the law came, <laughs> and what was the law that came to his heart? Thou shalt not covet. The man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And when, God, when, when, when the Lord showed to Saul of Tarsus the Apostle Paul, that God was considering his heart, then he died. <laughs> he died. And um, <clears throat> verse 6, how are we going to get to this dwelling, pla dwelling place? It's not far away. That's what God's saying to us. This is not, this is gonna, doesn't take a journey to get there. It's... Uh, it, you, you don't, have to, you don't have to travel a long distance. The righteousness which is of faith speaketh 
on this wise. <laughs> so we know that something about this dwelling place has to do with speaking. Say not, don't speak like this. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Don't talk like that. Perish the thought. Don't even think it. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do to bring Christ to me? What can I do to persuade him to save me? What work can I work uh, to, to, to accomplish my salvation? And who shall descend down into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. What can I do to make the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ effectual for me? You see, don't, don't talk like that. Don't think like that. That's, that's, a, that's a works gospel. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the religious and the irreligious, the moral and the immoral, the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> believing, believing. On him, calling on him. That's, it, it, it's as close as your lips. That's how, that's how close this dwelling place is. To call upon him. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 15. We'll go back to our text. The Lord himself... The Lord himself is our dwelling place. When we call upon him, we're calling upon him to do his work of redemption without any contribution on our part. We're not trying to add to or take away from what he's done. We're, we're confessing. We're confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. We have no place else to go but to rest the hope of our salvation on him. That's what, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place. Now the second question I want to ask is, where is this dwelling place? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 15 says, Look down from thy holy habitation. Now, the word holy habitation is the same exact word as dwelling place in Psalm 90 verse 1. And so the, the believer is crying out to God, God look down from thy dwelling place. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven and bless thy people Israel. Where is our, where is our hiding place? Where is, where is the Lord Jesus Christ? He is our hiding place. Where is he? <laughs> he has ascended back and taken his rightful place, seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. That's what the scripture says. All the blessings of God are in Christ in the heavenlies. So we're looking, we're looking to heaven. <laughs> that's, why, that's why Paul said in Colossians, set your affections on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That's where our dwelling place is. <laughs> that's where it's always been. It's always been there. You see, even before time began, even before Adam was created, even before sin entered into the human picture, the Lord Jesus Christ was our dwelling place. We've always been in Christ. He's the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. God placed his elect in Christ, in the covenant of grace, before the first one of them was ever born. Or before Adam was ever made. Before the stars were ever, were ever created. So our dwelling place is in 
heaven. He is our dwelling place. By faith, we see Christ as our advocate. You see, this dwelling place, what we read in Romans chapter 10 is that, is that this journey to this dwelling place is done in the heart through faith. It's through faith. It's not something that's performed uh, in, with an act of the flesh. It's a work of grace in the heart. And so the, Lord, the Lord's making it clear that, that, we, that we look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. <laughs> He's seated. The Lord said, sit thou here at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We are by nature at enmity with God. And the Lord, by his grace, brings us through faith to do like Mary. What did the Lord say about Mary? Oh, Martha, Mary has chosen that one thing needful. She's the one sitting at my feet listening to, to my words. And the Lord, by his grace, causes those who are at enmity with him to be his footstool, to sit at his feet and to listen to him. By faith we see him in the covenant of grace as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. By faith we hear God say to his son, sit thou here at my right hand. By faith we believe that all the blessings of God are in Christ in the heavenlies. Second Chronicles chapter 30 verse 27. Then the priest arose that priest is Christ, and he blessed the people. And their voices were heard, and their prayers went up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. So, Christ himself is our dwelling place. Where is he located? <laughs> Where is he? He's in the heavenlies. He's seated. He's finished the work of redemption. He's accomplished everything necessary for his people to be able to have rest. We look in faith to what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished in his flesh. We look back 2,000 years ago to see that, that God was made flesh. That God Almighty was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. He was born of a woman. He was born under the law to redeem those who are cursed by the law. And we beheld and we do behold through the eye of faith his glory as the only begotten of the Father. He's the one that's full of grace and full of truth. That can only be done by faith. That can only be seen through the eye of faith. The natural eye can't see it. <laughs> oh, Lord, thou art our dwelling place. His dwelling place, the dwelling place of the Lord Jesus Christ, was in constant fellowship with his Father. You know, you and I are in need of, of entertainment and distractions in this life, aren't we? We are. We, we, the Lord wasn't. He wasn't. You know, we, we become discontent pretty quickly when, when life becomes mundane and there's no, there's no change uh, to be experienced in this, in this life. We're always looking for a reprieve. We're looking for a distraction. We're looking for some entertainment and something to, to, to spice up life for us. That was never true for the Lord Jesus Christ. He needed none of that. He received all of his happiness and all of his satisfaction, and all of his contentment by being in his dwelling place. And so it will be for us one day, one day. You see, that's the flesh that needs all those things, isn't it? It's the flesh that needs, that needs change and, and, and entertainment and distractions. But, but once we are rid of this flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be our dwelling place forever. <laughs> and like 
Well, the scripture says we'll see him as he is and be made like him. (laughs) And just like he received all of his happiness and all of his satisfaction, all of his contentment in his fellowship with the Father, so it will be for us when we see him in glory. He'll be all we need. Where is this dwelling place? Well, listen to Psalm 26, verse 8. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelleth. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only place where the honor of God dwells. This is the place where he's pleased to manifest his glory. This is the place where his people come together and worship him in the power of the Spirit and according to the truth of the gospel. No other place. No other place is Christ honored. No no place out there in the world. Um, This is where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And we dwell in him, and his word dwells in us. <laughs> That's it. Abide, abiding in Christ. Psalm 68, verse 5 says that he is a father to the fatherless, and he is a judge to the widow. Now, the fatherless and the widow were desperately needy (laughs) they had no one to provide for them to speak of the fatherless and the widow is just another way of the speaking of sinners he is a father to the fatherless he is a judge to the widow he is God in his holy habitation This is the house of God. This is the habitation. This is the place where he's pleased to make himself known. And this is the place where he's worshipped by his people. Oh, Lord, you are my habitation. You are my dwelling place. You are my rest and all my satisfaction. And I look in faith to what you accomplished on Calvary's cross when you shed your precious blood for the payment of my sin. I look to your obedience to the Father, obedience even unto death, to satisfy the demands of God's holy justice. I look to you seated at the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for me. I look to you as the successful Savior of sinners. You are my hiding place. And I discover and, and, and hear your voice and see you when I'm blessed to be able to gather together with your people and hear the gospel of your grace preached. That's, my, that's, that's, it. that's where his habitation is. Turn with me to Psalm 71. Back just a few pages to Psalm 71. Verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. I can't put my trust in man. I can't put my trust in myself. I can't put my trust in my works. I can't. But Lord, in you I can put my trust. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is trusting him. Trusting him. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. There's a lot of things in this world that are confusing, aren't there? A lot of things. But to be put to confusion means that the confusion of this world causes you to look away from Christ. That's what it is to be put to confusion. And so, Lord, cause the confusing things of this world to cause me to look to you and to trust you. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. There is a way of escape. 
The Lord Jesus Christ is that way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And so now he's praying, Lord, cause me to escape. If you don't cause me to escape, I won't be able to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Save me. Now look at verse 3. Be thou my strong dwelling place, habitation. That's the same word. Whereunto I may continually resort. (laughs) You see, this dwelling place is not something we go to one time and think, well, I've been there, done that. No, we continually resort to this dwelling place. Why? Because we're often put to confusion. We're often caused to look away. And so the Lord, in his mercy, causes us to keep coming. That's why Peter, when he spoke of coming to Christ, he didn't say, he didn't say, he said, to whom coming present tense personal to whom coming that I may continually dwell thou hast given commandment to save me for thou art my rock and my fortress Lord you're my hiding place you're my only hope and now as the psalmist Oh, Moses, by the way, you see in your Bible, go back with me to Psalm 90. You see where Moses is the penman of this psalm? This psalm predates all other psalms. <laughs> Moses lived 500 years before David. And so this is a prayer of Moses. And, and, and Moses is, is, is contemplating the eternality and the immortality and the, and the immutability of God as it, as it compares to man's frailty, man's temporal, ever-changing condition, and the, and the trials and troubles that, that man faces in this world. And he says, O oh Lord, Thou, Thou art my hiding place to whom I must continually dwell. I'm looking in faith. This hiding place can only be gotten to. This dwelling place, this place of safety, can only be gotten to by faith. It's the only way to get there. That's what Romans chapter 10, don't be confused about Romans chapter 10. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know the free willers love to quote those verses to say, well, that's what you've got to do in order to be saved. That's, a, that, that's, the, that's the demonstration of faith. That's the demonstration of faith. God is, and, and faith is a gift of God. <laughs> And I remind you of an illustration I've given you several times. And that is that, that, that breathing, faith is to our spiritual life what breathing is to our physical life. When a child is born alive, what is the first thing that it does? It breathes. It breathes. It breathes because it's alive. It doesn't take a breath in order to be alive. If a child is born and doesn't breathe, it it was never alive in the birth. We call that a stillborn child. And so it is with faith. Regeneration. The work of the Spirit of God giving to us the new life, the new birth. In in order of in order of cause and effect, not in order of time. Now, in order of time, it, they happen simultaneously. But in order of t- of cause and effect, regeneration necessarily precedes faith, just like life precedes breathing and so the lord's the lord's doing to us what that doctor does when that baby's born (laughs) what's he do he slaps him and breathe child breathe 
And the live child does just that. He breathes. That's what the Lord's doing in Romans chapter 10. He's saying, call upon me. Call upon me. And whosoever calls upon me shall be saved. (laughs) The Lord's holding us up by our feet and slapping us on the butt and say, breathe. (laughs) Breathe. (laughs) Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that are, how do I know? How do I know that I have spiritual life? Because I breathe. (laughs) Because I call upon him. Notice the last part of verse 90. In all generations. I want you to turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. You remember what Romans chapter 11 is all those saints... (laughs) mentioned in the Old Testament and how they believed God. And then Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, seeing that you are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, lay aside the sin which doth so easily beset you. What is the sin that doth so easily beset you? I know, but... Somebody may be thinking about a particular habit or problem that they have in their life. No, the root cause of all of our habits and all of our sin is the sin of unbelief. Set aside those things that that weigh you down and, and look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame. He thought nothing of its shame. First Peter chapter five. Now that 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 whole chapter eleven of Hebrews is written to say to us, they believed me. <laughs> and you go back and look at some of the circumstances they went through, and yet what a hall of faith. And then, and then in First Peter chapter five, look at uh, look at verse six. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. In due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. How do you know that? Because God said so. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfastly in the faith. (laughs) What is it to resist the devil in the faith? It's to look to Christ when tempted by the devil is to look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to call upon Him. It's to cast all your care on Him, believing that He cares for you. Knowing, here's what I want you to see, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren in the world. (laughs) Oh, child of God, there hath no temptation taken you. But such is common to all men. God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will provide with the temptation a way of escape. He has provided the Lord Jesus Christ as our dwelling place. He is our way of escape that you might be able to bear it. And every believer, every child of God, whether we talk about the ones listed in Hebrews chapter 11, we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Every child of God has suffered these things from the accuser of the brethren, the afflictions, 
And notice in that passage in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, I emphasized it when I read it or quoted it, the afflictions which were accomplished <laughs> by your brethren in the world. These things are the accomplishment of our faith, aren't they? The trying of your faith work of patience. <laughs> the Lord has caused us to have a need for a dwelling place in order to get us to pursue and to believe on Christ as our dwelling place. All right. Let's take a let's take a break.